So in the last video we have seen our first value of code, first for a simple AND gate, then for another circuit with uh, two gates. Okay. So next step, uh, let's make sure that our code is working as intended. That means our description is actually representing the circuit that we want to design. For this we will be using a kind of idiot tool called simulators. Now there are a lot of simulators coming from different vendors. So we have a model sim simulator which we are going to use for this course. Then from vendor graphic itself there is something called Questa sim, then there is NC sim, then iVerilog, there are a lot of uh, simulators available. Okay. So again as I mentioned before, uh, which tool you are going to use to simulate has no effect on how you write Verilog. It is independent of the tool. Uh, that you are using at least for simulation. When we go for implementation uh, you may see like uh, the target EDA tool will have some uh, dependency on how you are writing code. Okay. So anyway, so if you have installed Quartus, uh, the model sim also gets installed with that. So I have a shortcut here. So if you don't know, uh, in your installation directory, in your Quartus Intel FPG Lite inside that uh, we have quarters here. There is also a folder called model sim ASC. Inside that win32 ALOEM. Inside that we have model sim. Okay. So we can keep a shortcut somewhere here. So let's open it. Now the code that I have written, I have already saved it somewhere. I have saved it in this folder. Okay. Test folder. Okay. Now, when model sim comes up, okay, so this is the first screen. Let's close it. Uh, a lot of details we will see again as we go along. Okay, for the time being, here you can see a lot of libraries here. Uh, why libraries are there, how we will use the libraries, we will see later. Uh, but let me add one thing here. Uh, Verilog, when we compare with VHDL, will work without any special libraries. Okay. VHDL we will always have to do or in most cases we will have to use at least one library called the uh, IEEE library. But with look, it will just work like that. And most of the libraries that you are seeing here, you can see some names here, ARIA, Cyclone, Max, Stratix. These are all libraries for so called FPGAs from Intel. Okay. So unless uh, we are writing code specific for a particular FPGA, we won't have to use any of these libraries either. Now all these libraries came here because we are using model sim Intel edition at the top you can see. Uh, model sim comes in again different version. We have Intel edition, we have Silinx edition. If you are using Silinx edition which is a different FPGA vendor, we will have libraries for those FPGA. Then there is model sim professional edition independent. And there won't be any libraries as such because it is not depending on any FPGA vendor. So don't worry about any of this. So we have libraries here. And again model sim, uh, we can do a lot of things using GUI, graphical interface and we can do all those things by typing some commands here. So the commands we usually call uh, scripts. We have to write them in tickle. Okay. So as a beginner, it is uh, better to use GUI that will make our life easier. Commands uh, we will see later. Okay. So usually first step is once model sim comes up, uh, we will go to this file and we will choose this change directory and go to the folder where you have kept your uh, Verilog code. Okay. So I have kept everything here. So let's change directory here. Now you will see whenever you are doing something in the GUI uh, here, on the transcript window, the corresponding command automatically comes. So CD is for a change directory like any other place. Okay, So that's the first thing. Second thing uh, for simulation, what we have to do is we have to do compilation. Okay, So this compilation, let me clarify it. So model sim is a software and using this software, we are trying to simulate a hardware description. Now the difference between our traditional software and uh, HDLs I mentioned previously. So in HDL we have the concept of time, 
we have the concept of concurrency, things like that, which are not present in our usual software implementation. But model sim, it is a software implementation. Now, using this software implementation, which is this sequential kind of thing, he will have to somehow emulate how the actual hardware will work. For that, uh, model sim, they have their proprietary representation of your HDL description. So he will take this Verilog description and it will do a compilation. So basically from Verilog, it will convert it into a format which only model sim understands. That's a proprietary format. So they will convert it into that format and using that format, he will be able to simulate the circuit. Okay, so that's what is going to happen. So for compilation, we go to compile and choose compile and browse and show you a circuit HDL description. So let's simulate the AND gate first. Okay, we just say compile. Then he will give you a warning saying the library work does not exist. Do you want to create this library? Now the idea of this work directory or work library that is actually coming from VHDL. Uh, HDL description. There it is mandatory to have a library called work where all your uh, code will be kept. Now model say it works same way for VHDL and Verilog. So, uh, so it is mandatory to have a library with the name work and by default all the Verilog code that you are going to compile will be kept in the library called work. Okay. So, he is saying like in your current directory in this C desktop test folder, he cannot see this uh, work library and he is asking us whether you want to create it. Yeah, let us say yes and compile that. Okay. So, he already did the compilation and at the end of compilation, if there are any syntax errors, he will show you. If there are any warnings, he will show you. Okay. Now he is saying like there are no errors or warning. Now on the left under library, now you can see there is a new library called work and under work you can see your module. Okay. Now the name that is going to come will be the name of the module that you put. Okay, I compiled the and or circuit. Okay, let, that we will do later. First let me compile our and get on. So compile. Okay. Wait. And get. Okay. So let's compile that. Okay. So the name will be the name of the module, not the name of the file. But since we are keeping same name for file as well as module, uh, they will match. So as, as I mentioned, that's a good design practice. Try to always follow it. Now, model sim it has its own editor. Okay, instead of using Notepad plus plus, you can type your code in model sim itself, and you can uh, compile here. For example, here, yeah. So if you click it, the editor will come up, and you can type your code here. Or in this case, uh, after compilation, if you want to edit, you can right click and choose edit. Okay, don't double click. When you double click, something else will happen. I will show you. So you just right click and choose edit. So the editor will come up. So here also you can see it is color coded, all keyword, everything is color coded. Now suppose if you forgot to put this semicolon and if you compile, it will give an error. So again, you can go to compile and choose compile or as I mentioned, he automatically runs a command for compilation. This is that command, vlog, compile a very log source code. Okay. So if you just press your up arrow, uh, like our Linux systems, he will show you the previous command. So I can just up and run again and you can see like line number 11. Like any software compiler, he will tell you what is the syntax or where it is, what is there, all the same. Okay. So, okay. So let's put it back and compile again. So remember, even if you are changing a, a single comma or semicolon in your source code, you should re recompile your code. Okay, so that's mandatory. So once compilation is successful, we will go to the actual simulation. So for simulation, again, there's a simulation tab and you can choose start simulation. Then from the work library, you can choose the particular module you want to simulate or you can just double click it. Then the simulation window will open up. Okay, so this is uh, simulation. 
here on the left you can see a window sim you should be also able to see a wave window where we can visually see the waveforms okay as a beginner uh, we will be debugging or checking the behavior of our circuit by looking at the waves the same way we look waves in a oscilloscope same way we will look at the waveform and try to find out whether our circuit is working fine but later when we have very complicated circuits that will become extremely difficult to physically check whether waves are working fine or not okay yeah, in that time we will try uh, some other technique okay so to see the waveform okay we will click that module name and right click and choose add wave so once you do that you will be able to see all the inputs and outputs as well as internal wires of your module so this shows the entire hierarchy so you can see my and gate that is the module name slash in one okay so basically that is this in one similarly into and out in one into out okay so you can see all the inputs and output now how do we simulate so basically we want to check whether the functionality is right or wrong so for any digital circuit you know that is basically done through the truth table we can do it for any complicated circuit the truth table so we can give all the possible inputs and uh, we can check what output is coming and we can verify whether the output is expected output or no so for example for and gate let me give both inputs as high so to give some value to this input you just right click and choose force here and if you want to give one give one here then okay then next input also force one okay okay so you will never force an output you will give values only to the input and you check what output is coming okay so we gave the values after that we need to run the simulator now there are a lot of options to run the simulator for example you can ask the simulator to run for a particular amount of time you can ask the simulator to run forever multiple options are there okay now this time period this 100 picosecond this is picosecond okay is actually representing uh, what happens if you give this input to the circuit and run it for 100 picosecond on real hardware okay real hardware so this is what we call as a simulation time now only because here it is 100 picosecond when you run the simulator uh, you cannot say like your simulation model sim will do it in 100 picosecond there is no such meaning okay depending upon how powerful your system is how much ram it has what is your processor depending upon that exactly how much time it will take to simulate this much time may vary okay so again let me repeat so this time is indicating for how long the simulation should run provided this uh, circuit was implemented on a real hardware okay so let's keep it like that at this point of time later maybe i will be adding more and more details so at that time we'll see at this point we are not really worried about this you can put whatever value you want and let's click this option run now on the simulator now you can see some waveform green color and here you can see the waveform starts from zero and it goes only till 100 picosecond because we kept 100 picosecond here if you click again it will run for another 100 second if you want you can separate this wave window from here so that it will be easier to see okay now you can zoom in zoom out on your keyboard you can press i to zoom in o for zoom out so you can clearly see so what are you saying so here you can see st1 basically saying state one that means input is high this is also high this is also high so when you give two high input the output is high that's what is expected from AND gate now let me change only one of the inputs so let me make this input as zero other one as one okay let's run so you can see the moment i made this input low our output also became low okay that's how and get is supposed to behave and let's make the other input also low okay yeah there is no change in the output zero zero is also zero 
Now let me put both of them back to one. Okay, let me make only this guy one. Okay, output is still zero. Let me make this guy one. Now you will see output became one because at this moment both inputs are high. Okay, so this is how we do basic simulation using waveform. Okay, so once you have done with simulation, once you are happy with that, you can quit from simulation. So you can go simulate and you can choose end simulation. Now again under simulator, lot of options are there for debugging. Uh, we will discuss them later when we have a bit more complicated circuit. So you can choose end simulation and choose yes. So we came out of the simulator okay so you can see like uh, at the top this layout thing something he will say no design this is the layout this is how it will look like when you are writing your code and when you go for simulation you will see the layout is changing to simulate layout okay okay now let's do uh, one more simulation our other circuit which one and or circuit Okay, so this time let me do it using the commands so that we have some basic idea about commands also. So the commands are, uh, as I mentioned before, written using tickle scripting language. So you can type them here. So first step, since we already have work, we can directly go and compile. If you want to create this work directory also using command, the uh, command is vlib. Okay, vlib is for creating a library. If I type vlib vpin, uh, you will see like here he will create a library called vpin. Okay? So if you want to create work directory, uh, if you are running for the first time, you just type vlib work, then work will come. Then you need to compile. Okay? For compiling very low code, the command is vlog followed by the name of the file. Okay, this time it is the name of the file. It is and or circuit and or circuit.v at the top here showing. Okay, so he compiled. Now you can see you have my AND gate, we have and or circuit. Now you can choose which one to simulate. We have two modules. So I want to simulate our and or circuit. So we can choose V sim. Simply typing and or circuit will work, but a proper way is library name because it is in the work library dot name of the module okay and or circuit don't put dot v now because after compilation and this is not your value code this is a compiled code okay so just type v sim and or circuit so our simulator came now adding waveform also you can do using command but the simplest one is of course right click and choose at. Okay, so we have so this time you can see all the inputs, outputs, as well as this and out, which is this internal wire. So you can see that also. Okay, so that's the good thing. So let's put some value. Okay, one. Okay, let's look at the circuit. So if I make all of them one, 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 this output is one, this is one. OR gate output will be 1. So if IN3 is 1, output will be always 1, right? Because it's going to the OR gate. Okay. So IN3, let's move, make it 1. For it's 1. IN1, one, IN2. Now their value, it doesn't matter. If IN3 is 1, output will become 1 because of that circuit. Okay. So you can see this is the output that became one. The output of that wire is low because these two are going to the AND gate and this is one zero, right? Now if you want the output to be low, in three should be low. And the output of AND gate should be low. For the output of AND gate to become low, one of the input should be low, which is already, that is the case. So you can see output is low. Now another way to make the output high is make in one and it put in one and in two high, right? Which will make the output of AND gate high. So you can see AND out output of AND gate became high. So output is also high, although in three is low. 
So again, if you really want to test it, we have to give all the possible input combinations. Since we have three inputs, we have two to R of three, eight input combinations possible. And we can try all eight and compare it with the truth table of the circuit and make sure it is working. Okay, so this is how we do the basic simulation. Now, once you are done with simulation, the command is quit sim, okay, quit sim to exit from the simulator and come to this uh, default layout. So that's it. Uh, I may, I will show one more thing. Now, if you go to the folder where I kept my Wedlock source code. So you can see there is a folder called work. There is a folder called VPN also. So of course these two are the libraries. So libraries they are basically folders only. So this one I don't want. Now inside work you will see a lot of files. So this is what I said. Uh, model sim he takes your Wedlock source code and converts it into a internal representation that only the model sim understands. So these files you cannot open. Uh, they are binary files. So you cannot read and understand anything. It's a proprietary file which only that software understands. So this WLF file, it has the information about the waveform that we just view. Okay? So that's also an internal file used by uh, model sim. Now there is a dot .bak file and that was created because I modified some code here. Okay? So he just kept a backup file that we don't need. So basically, uh, just remember, model sim, he always creates a library called work and by default, all the compiled source code that you are writing will be kept in the work directory. Now, this time you can exit model sim and next time when you open it, and you go to that uh, all directory you will see the work is already there and some compiled code is already there right that is coming from this folder so that's it so there were some exercise at the end of previous slides so try those exercise after that uh, simulate them and see whether they are working properly or not thank you